Hello guys! Today I'm gonna configure my Spring Boot application to authenticate to GitHub with the O2 system. I will use GitHub as an authorization server, but I could have done it with Facebook or Google. If you're interested, stay focused. Remember to subscribe to my channel and let's go! The O2 system is an authentication system based on an authorization server. In my case, I've used GitHub. Let's first see how to create and configure a GitHub application to use it as an authorization server. In the developer section, I can create an OS application. Give a name. The homepage URL. And the callback URL. Multiple OS clients have this URL already defined by convention, as Spring Boot does. Here I have the action, here I have the protocol, the type of the OS2 and the server, because there are multiple OS2 authorization types. The main components of the OS2 authorization system are the client, which uses it to be the backend server, the user agent, usually the browser, the authorization server, GitHub or Google or Facebook, and the resource owner, the database the user wants to read, which is the GitHub account in our case. I want to read the GitHub account for two reasons. If I don't have the profile in my database application, I will fill it with the GitHub account information. And if I already have the profile in my database application, I use the GitHub account to look for the business information linked to this user. Ok, but which are the different authorization types and what are they used for? The authorization code grant is the one by default. The backend server will redirect the browser to an authentication page hosted in the authorization server. When done, the browser will obtain a code. This code must be sent to the backend. And the backend must now validate the code with the authorization server. This last step will allow the browser to read the necessary information from the target database. There are other OS2 systems, but I won't handle them in this video. There is the implicit grant, which is mostly used for mobile or JavaScript applications. The resource owner password credentials grant, which requires that the backend and the database have a trusted relationship. And the client credentials grant, which is mainly used for API authentication. Ok, my GitHub application is ready. Let's create the credentials to allow my backend authenticates to the GitHub authorization server. And now let's move to my Spring Boot application. I only need one Maven dependency. Reload the project and configure this dependency to talk with the GitHub server. This is unbelievable, but that's all. Let's test it. This is the default URL used by the OS2 clients. This one will start the authentication workflow. The workflow starts by the backend server. This one will generate a link for the browser to see the login form in the authorization server. The login form of GitHub. This link will contain the information of my backend server, which type of authorization I am asking for the ID of the application I've created on GitHub, the redirect URL, which must be the same as the one configured, the scope, which is the action I want to perform upon the GitHub account, I want to read the account information, and the state, which is a unique ID of the request. This way, this link can't be used twice. Then, the authorization server will answer the browser with the code and the same state ID. The browser must send this code to the backend, and the backend will request an access token with this code. The resulting access token will then be used against the GitHub API to read the user's account. 
Too many steps, right? Hopefully, the previous library does all of them for me. Here is the authorization type, my client ID, the scope, my unique ID, and the redirect URL. Let's open it in a browser. We can see here the request to the GitHub authorization server. And this is the callback to my application with the code and the state information. The Spring Boot O2 library will create this cookie with the session ID and with the user information in the session. And to read the user information, I just need to add the authentication principle O2 user to read the information in the controllers. Let's see how to use this cookie in a request. Here is the information which came from the GitHub account, from the GitHub API. That's all for this video. It didn't have a lot of code, but it has a lot of information. Hopefully, the Spring Boot O2 dependency does it all for me. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to click on the like button if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this one. Bye!